green plains and paddocks of Canterbury, some of the best sheep country in the Dominion, every kind of pastoral farming has prospered in recent years. Dairy and beef cattle have gained new importance, and the training and breeding of thoroughbred horses is a major industry. Concentrated around Christchurch, stud farms and training stables are turning out trotters and gallopers that are in world class. Isn't that a fact, Shorty? Too right! Out from Rickerton, the Allen Holmes trotting stables are carrying about 80 mares and have 30 horses in training. And at these stables is the famous Gold Bar, winner of 13,000 pounds in stakes and holder of several world trotting records. Many of his progeny are already earning big money, and with the Addington Spring meeting about to begin, Alan Holmes has Congo Song, a son of Gold Bar, working hard. Congo Song is in the centre as they come around. Christchurch, and bound for the Metropolitan Trotting Club's meeting and the equal A&P show attraction, the local citizens are all double-decked out for the racing carnival. At Addington, the crowds pile up as the four-day cup meeting gets underway. And from the way the tote's sticking over, it looks as though the punters are laying it on with a will. Hmm, not a bad bit, a bet. And there's a man who's putting it on all round. <laughs> Listen who's talking. The balloon's up, the barrier's down, and they're fighting it out on the rails all the way, coming down to the straight. Who is it? It's Congo Song. Congo Song bowling along from Gay Knight, hanging on well, and Demetrius fighting it out. But Congo Song holds the lead as the field goes down to the post, and Congo Song will win three lengths out from Gay Knight and the Metropolitan Challenge stakes of £1,000. Three wins for Congo Song in three days. As Confucius says, if you're not in, you can't win, so we stick another pin through the old book and try again. About number six for the seventh. Hmm, these boys seem to be doing pretty well. In the birdcage, they're milling round and the drivers have checked in for the New Zealand pacing free for all. One mile and a half of 2,000 pounds. That's integrity with the white gadget around his nose. And number three, Mrs. M.A. Hazlitt's B.H. Emulus. Integrity, number six, leading them out, followed by number seven, in the mood. And the big crowd's in the mood all right today, as this year's four-day meeting has been the biggest since the war. And they're away. Some of them broke up there, but most of them are away to a good start. And as they come down to the first bend, Integrity is out in front, but Navigate is coming up to take over the lead. And the pair are clear of Great Belwyn, Aberhall, Turco, in the mood, and the pace is a cracker. the distance gone, Knave of Diamonds has moved up to join Navigate and the pair are followed by Integrity and Turco with Highland Fling making up ground for Sulky's out and now it's Knave of Diamonds taking charge from Highland Fling, Navigate, Sir Michael, Turco, Integrity as they swing into the last time round. Now it's Integrity coming through with half a furlong to go and it's Integrity all the way within the mood finishing fast to take second place from Turco. Turco, a hard drive and integrity, another victory for D.A. Watts and the Leeming Stables. And over the fence from Addington, the Canterbury A&P Association South Island Show is attracting the largest crowds for many years. The hard ground is not giving the competitors in the jumping events the assistance expected, but it's one of the most popular features of the show. The winner in the pony jumping class receives a prize, and another champion, View Bell Emperor, best of the Jersey Bulls. Charming creatures, such expressive eyes. Under the judge's hand is Glenn Stewart Regina Model, South Island Frisian champ, and that's a lot of beef. Another blue ribbon. And this is one of Glenn Stewart's daughters, Glenn Hope RM Echo Jewel, winner take all among the Frisian cows. As was expected, the show was a notable event in the sheep classes, the Merino standard was high, and the Corridales were the best ever. Production is the keynote of the 1947 show, and the displays point the way to farmers in the drive to aid Britain by improving stock, pastures, and farming methods. The highlight is the grand parade on the last day, marking the end of the 85th show held by the Canterbury Association. The sheep entries have been outstanding, the dairy cattle in particular are among the best seen anywhere in the Dominion, and the horse and pony sections prove that Canterbury is still a province of thoroughbreds. Yes, 
yes, not bad. But thoroughbreds are not just lucky finds. And at the galloping stables around Riccarton, you learn how much care and patience goes into the breeding of our cup winners and champions. The Shaw Stables at Riccarton is one of many model breeding and training centres where the horses are carefully worked and trained up to peak form. The routine is as carefully arranged as a nursery and the horses are groomed in regal style. And here is Bola Harve, a likely candidate for this year's New Zealand Cup. There's some doubt whether he can carry the 9-3 weight to victory over two miles, but he has many supporters. Cup day arrives and there's an exciting atmosphere as the horses parade ready for the eight big events of the day. The stands at Riccarton are filled with a record crowd. There have been some surprises already, and the 77-pound divvy is up for a lucky few. It's getting some of us down. Mm -hmm. There certainly is some talent here today. Even the strong arm of the law is getting some pointers. In the saddling paddock, number 10, Palm Bearer, has been shaping up well and is looking well. Number two, Beau Lahav. And 1A, Royal Tan, who'll have LJ Ellis up. The last turnaround and Beau Lahav leaves the birdcage, followed by Lang Dor. Gay Stroller is frisky, with Mike with each way, and the crowd pours down into the enclosure for the starter's signal. They're off, and the 1947 New Zealand Cup has begun. Wild Ribbon, Catrick Bridge, Royal Victor are well away. Past the stands and Bowler Harves in the middle of the field. Into the bandage, Royal Victor, Catrick Bridge. But Connor's taken Bowler Harve up into the outside. Take it easy there, you'll last longer. Round the bend into the straight, it's Royal Victor and Royal Tan, followed by Bowler Harve. And coming up to the post, it's Royal Tan, but Bowler Harve is racing through, and it's Bowler Harve by half a length from Royal Tan. A great race, and this year's cup goes to Bowler Harve with W. Connor up. Owner M.J. Nash is a happy man as he receives the gold cup. And another Christchurch race carnival is over. Time staggers on.